I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Beta Flight 3.3 is, little birdies are telling me that it is just about to drop. In fact, by the time you see this video, maybe it's even already come out. And that means it's time for me to talk about filters. And I've decided, here's what I've decided to do. This is the video where I'm going to keep it as short as I possibly can and just tell you what you should do if you want to try the new filtering in Betaflight 3.3. So the command line option that you're going to want to be aware of is right here, gyro stage two low pass hertz. When that is set to zero, this new stage two filter is disabled. When that is set to any number other than zero, that is enabled. Now, for all the magic that this filter has been promised to have to make your quad fly great, you need to know that at its heart, it's just another low pass filter on the gyro. So the only thing to do when tuning it is to pick the frequency that it needs to be at. And I'm going to give you two recommendations. What some of the devs have suggested to me is to set the two stage low pass hertz around 150 hertz as a starting value. And then go into the pin tuning tab and go to the filter settings and disable all of the notch filters, including the D-term notch. The idea here is that the additional filtering of the two, the cascaded low pass filters, one of them at 90 hertz, one at 150 hertz, will attenuate the motor noise enough that the notch filters are no longer needed. Some, uh, some of them even suggested that we go to the configuration tab and disable, yes, disable the dynamic filter. And when I heard this, I was a little shocked because I'm like, isn't the dynamic filter like really important and wonderful? And the argument that they made was that when you have this much low pass filtering, you don't need the, the, the notch filters, not even the dynamic filter. At least one of the devs who I spoke to said that he didn't think that this was the right way to use the stage two low pass at all. And what he said is that having the stage two low pass set this low adds too much latency and it makes the quad fly really bad, really bad prop wash handling and so forth. So if you find that you set it up this way and you get really bad prop wash, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna increase that cutoff for the stage two low pass. You're gonna wanna move that number up how high to work that number up, now you're getting into the realm of where you might want to look at some black box data and see where your motor frequencies are and so forth. Most uh, five inch quads, the motor frequencies are around, say, 350 to 550 hertz. Um, so you could probably work that number up easily, you know, to 200, 250, 300 hertz and still get sufficient attenuation of the motor frequencies. If you smoke your motors, though, that's on you. There's another approach to tuning these filters that I want to tell you about, and this is described by a guy. His name is Mark Spatz. He has a YouTube channel. It's UAV Tech, and I'll put a link down in the video description. And I'm including his approach here because if you go check out his channel, he has been documenting the development of the filters in so much detail. He reminds me of myself when I was younger. <laughs> two years ago. He's putting out these 20 minute long videos where he talks about the filters. He talks about how they all interact on a super deep level. And it's actually, it makes me a little nostalgic because I put out so much, con I have so much to get done right now, big stuff. And I can't actually take as much time to do the really deep in the weeds dives as I used to. So it's really, it's actually good. It's great to see him doing this. If you're into that, you should definitely check him out. He's doing black box log analysis too. Just reminds me of myself. <laughs> um, so it's great that he's doing that. And if you're into that, you should check that out. His approach to tuning is different than when I interviewed some of the devs on what they recommended. And in fact, some of them explicitly disagreed and said, mm, I don't think that's the right thing to do. But he is so dedicated, passionate about this. It feels to me like his attention, his, his opinion deserves some attention. Hey, the, the devs aren't always right. So here's what he recommends. If we could sum up the approach that, that the devs I talked to had, it was that you want to keep the stage two filter below the motor noise and get rid of as many of the notch filters as you can, basically all the notch filters. At that point, you get a net gain in latency. You have lower latency, better latency, and you have 
adequate filtering. And that applies whether you're doing 32 kilohertz or eight kilohertz or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mark's approach is a little bit different. What he says is that he wants to leave the dynamic notch enabled. And the dynamic notch is active in the mid frequencies from something like 100 to 400 hertz. Basically, the dynamic notch focuses on the frequencies where the motor noise is likely to be. So his approach is that the gyro low pass handles everything below about 90 hertz, just like always. The new stage two filter handles everything above the motor frequencies. So basically all that additional noise that you get when you go to 32 kilohertz sampling that isn't there the rest of the time, you let the stage two filter handle that. And then you let the dynamic notch handle those middle frequencies. So the main difference between Mark's approach and the approach that I got from the devs is that he sets the stage two no uh, filter higher and he leaves the dynamic notch enabled. That's a good way to sum it up. If you are not using the 32 kilohertz mode for some reason, then the, your tuning guidelines may be a little bit different. And the main reason you wouldn't use the 32 kilohertz mode is that your flight controller doesn't support it. Some of them just can't do it. If you have the MPU 6000 gyro, for example, it doesn't do 32K. And if you're not sure, just turn on that 32 kilohertz slider and hit save and reboot. And if when it comes back, it's still on, you're doing it. And if it just keeps turning itself off every time you try and save, your flight controller doesn't do it. If you are not doing 32 kilohertz, keep in mind that the stage two filter may not give you the best performance. For example, if you are flying right now and you're using the PT1 low pass and you've got all your notches turned off, turning on the stage two filter will give you a net decrease in latency. You will have worse latency and you already know your filtering is adequate. See, if your filtering is already adequate without the stage two filter, then adding the stage two filter doesn't give you an improvement, right? You need enough filtering, but no more than enough. It's the Goldilocks scenario, right? Not too little, not too much, just the right amount. On the other hand, if you're running eight kilohertz and you've tried turning off your notch filters and you couldn't turn off the D-term notch and you gotta have the dynamic notch on, then, when you enable the stage two filter, you may be able to disable those notches. And you see that you could get a net gain in latency and, and get improved for performance. So if you're using 32K mode, there's no doubt that you must use stage two and then you can explore what else, what other performance benefits you can get. But if you're in 8K mode, it, actually the best, you may find that the best performance doesn't have the stage two filter turned on. It just depends on how noisy your quad is and how many of the notch filters you can turn off without getting your motors hot and so forth. So let's set this quadcopter up to use the new filters. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable the gyro 32K sampling mode. And when you do this, your gyro update and your PID frequency update are gonna go to 32K. I suggest that you turn the PID frequency down because you're probably gonna be at 100% utilization if you try and run at 3232. So let's just set it to 32.8 to begin with and enable 32K sampling mode. And I'll do save and reboot. And my CPU load is at 48% at 32.8. So let's try and save some processor cycles. I'm gonna disable the accelerometer and do save and reboot. And we're down to 42%. My CPU load is right here. Um, Let's see, we turn the dynamic filter off. That's one of the guidelines that we were given. That's gonna save, actually, I think you might be surprised at how much it saves. 27%, the uh, dynamic filter is very processor intensive. So now I think I can safely go up to 32 and 16. And without overclocking, this is gonna be the most that a lot of you are gonna be able to do. Yeah, so now we're at about 40% utilization. I feel comfortable flying with that. You may notice that I've got multi-shot selected here instead of D-shot. Uh, and the real reason for that is that the ESCs that are on this build actually don't support D-shot, uh, not D-shot 600 anyway. Uh, and so I run them with multi-shot and I'm running them at, I've got this, this box ticked, the motor PWM speed separated, and I'm running them at 32,000. And that's what you should do if you're running multi-shot. If you wanna run D-shot, you should know that to run D-shot 600, you can run D-shot 600 at up to 16 kilohertz here in the PID loop frequency. If you're running D-shot, 
the, the, the motor PW, the motor speed is always the same as the PID loop frequency. So you must be running DSHOT 600 to go up to 16 kilohertz. If you want to try to run 32, 32, you need to be using either multi-shot at 32 kilohertz or DSHOT 1200. DSHOT 600 cannot go at 32 kilohertz. Well, technically it can, but if you try it, it will not work most most of the time. There's so much more that I want to say, but I'm trying to keep this video short and concise. So I'm going to sign off now. Happy flying.